I'm talking about. It's so good to see you this morning. As you all know, we stand for the reading of God's word in order to honor God's word and respect and rever what the Lord has to speak into our life. There is, uh, we believe there is power and authority in the powerful name of Jesus. Uh, and as you all know, there is the small trick that I do. I'm not going to tell you which chapter and which book so that I can take a small water break in between that. So what we are going to do is quickly, let me open the cap. Okay, I got it. We're going to, Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to 13. Oh no, somebody beat me to it today as well. <laughs> uh, I, I bet you used to bag all the Sunday school prizes for memory verse and, and finding the Bible verse. Amen. We're going to go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to 13, and that's the verse that we will be meditating and reading together. Only 13 verses. Shall we read that together? People who don't have your physical copies of Bible, you can look it up on screen as well, and God bless us. Shall we read that together? Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit spirit into the wilderness being tempted for 40 days by the devil and in those days he ate nothing and afterward when they had ended he was hungry and the devil said to him if you are the son of God command the stone to become what bread Jesus answered him saying it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said to him all this authority I will give you and their glory for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish therefore if you will worship before me all will be yours and then Jesus answered and said to him we'll read that together get behind me Satan for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve then he brought him to Jerusalem set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of God throw yourself down from here for it is written he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone and Jesus answered and said to him what did Jesus say it has been said you shall not tempt the Lord your God now when the devil had ended every temptation he departed from him until an opportune time may God bless the reading of God's word you may be seated in the house of the Lord Welcome to the celebration service at Celebration Church. It's a joy to see each one of your happy faces this morning in midst of all sorts of weather issues, in midst of all sorts of thunders that happened yesterday. As I said, you know, I was just woken up all of a sudden and then knowing that God is in control, I went back to sleep. Many a times when, when you know, when you've got circumstances and things that wake you up and jolt you down suddenly, just know that God is in control and he's going to take care of it. You know, I remember the times when, uh, you know, as a family, we go, on drives we like going to places whenever time allows us and you know how busy it can get uh, being in, in in ministry both brother and I we decide at least a summer every summer we, we try to take a few days or three or four days uh, it is difficult to sometimes step away from church for a longer period of time so three or four days we try to go on a drive as a family and, and you know, spend some time every time we go and last time we went from Dallas to all the way to Colorado Springs beautiful place you know and we are driving almost 16 17 hours we are driving and since the time we got up you know both my nephew and my niece they were asleep as soon as they woke up the first thing they ask is are we there yet are we there yet you know you might have those annoying kids who keep asking you those questions they want to go for a summer break but they don't want to sit in the car for a long time right you know and these kids they keep asking are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet but they always as soon as after five ten minutes they go back to sleep again knowing who is driving the car knowing that we are going to go to the destination sometime in our life that's the trust we need to have on our lord knowing that we're going to make it to our destination knowing that he is going to drive us through even though it is mountains or valleys we know he is in control that is the God that you and I serve we have a job or no job we have a house or no house we've got security or no security we know that we are secure in the precious blood of Christ Jesus and he will take care of you and me many a times we just don't like believing these things you know as you know over the past 
past four weeks or this whole month, we wanted to name this month as the month of unknown. Why? Because we go through so many unknowns in our life. Can you believe it? We have come to the sixth month of 2024. Looking back, we don't know how each day goes, but in each day, the Bible says every single day, every morning, His grace and His mercy is new every single day, every single morning. That's how we were able to do it. We have this question, God, how am I going to fight my tomorrow? You're going to fight your tomorrow with God's new grace and new mercy when the tomorrow comes in our life. Therefore, I want you and I to have that assurance in midst of the unknowns that we go through. One thing that you can be known about is a God who is going to stand with you, who is going to be with you. The first week of the unknown, we looked at unknown. Anybody? Idols, there you go, unknown idols. I love it when people can remember what's being preached, right? It's the biggest blessing that ministers can get. Second week, what is it? Unknown interruptions, there you go. And third week, yes, last week we were looking at unknown influences. And we saw last week, hey, how if you want to make an influence in your life, it does not start without you making an impact. In order for you to make an impact in somebody's life or people's life in the, in the culture and in the place that God has placed you, you need to first know your identity. And that is why we're going to look at unknown identities today. You know, we go through a season of our life where all of us want to make an influence wherever God has placed us. But we forget, influence does not start with, what did I say last week? It does not start with pulpit, it starts with people. It does not start with power, it starts with people. It does not start with position or title, it starts with people. Influence does not start when somebody is put up on the pedestal. Somebody is put up with the spotlight, absolutely not. I don't worship only when I am given a platform to worship. I will worship the Lord even in midst of the valley or in the midst of the mountain. I will sing praises unto the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in every situation. I'm going through, walking through the valley of shadow of death. I will still praise Him. I will go through a season where it will be full of tears and full of, of remorse. I will still praise Him because I know even though it is dark right now, there is a morning coming that is the promise of the Lord. In order to make an influence, you got to make an what? You got to make an impact. In order to make an impact, you need to know your identity. We live in a time and a culture where identity is based on what people say we are. Identity is based on what the society thinks you are. But Bible tells us differently and gives us the truth that our identity is not in what others say we are, but it is in the one who made you and me. Therefore, identity is if you want to know who you are, you need to know whose you are. If you want to know who you are let me repeat it you need to know whose you are you are not under sickness therefore sickness is not your master you are not under debt therefore debt is not your master you are not under curse therefore curse is not your master who is your master is the one who created the heavens and the earth in him is my identity found of late, we look at a world right now, it started with an agrarian culture, agricultural culture. And in those days, researchers say, if you have one child, that one child is worth $25,000 in a home. This is 100 years back, before the digital age started, before the industrialization happened. 100 years back, ag agrarian culture. One child, how much is it? Worth $25,000. Therefore, it was the goal of every parent to at least have 10 children. Minimum 10 children. And we Indians, we took that promise for to a next level. The most populated country in the whole world, the most blessed country in the whole world also. Right? So in those days, one child is worth $25,000. You know why? Because you're saving so much of labor money. So these children, before they go to school, they're going to pick all the things that they need to. They're going to mow the, 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 the lawn. These days, the deal is if you mow the lawn for summer, I'll give you $10. In those days, no, we'll put you to school. We'll put food on your table. That's how things work. And from there, things change to a world where we are, where we are, when I speak to a couple of young adults who are going through so much of pressure in their life today, not knowing how to lead their tomorrow. The only escape route that many people find, not just young adults, but older adults also, where they find the only escape route is to run away and sit in isolation. 
in midst of all of that where can i find a place that where i can just duck and get out and not see anybody not meet people at all you know the stats say this way which is from the mental health journal and from pew research it says according to the national health, uh, mental health it says an estimated of 31.9% of adolescents have an anxiety disorder of these 8.3 experience severe impairment due to their symptoms suicide rate among adolescents have increased 56% from 2017 to 2017 among the age group of 10 to 24 by the way the age group of 10 to 24 where they don't know how to handle the stress of life suicide rates have increased according to nami which is national alliance of mental illness it says one in five adults in the united states experience mental illness each year This includes a range of disorders such as depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder. We got to ask ourselves, we are living in a world where we have been thrown with anxiety and stress all around. We just don't want to wake up another day because we feel that it's a battle where we cannot fight it, where we cannot win victory. Last week as I was mentioning, let me remind you, when you do something in your life and if you're getting tired after prayer, if you need a 7 day of vacation after fasting and prayer, which means you were praying in flesh and not in spirit. Right? Because if the Lord is the one who is directing you, he will give you the strength as well. When we do a lot of things in our own strength, we fret. When we do a lot of things in our own ability, we have a lot of questions. But if you and I, when you do anything for the Lord, when you when you when you do worship, when you prepare for sermons, when you meet people, when you talk to people, when you work in your industry, go to school, do your college, do it in the strength of the Lord and not in your ability, and that is when you and I can face and tackle the anxieties and the disorders that the world is to bring into our life we all go through these seasons of depression and sadness and it is very normal in this day and age that we live in social media it says can increase the feelings of iso- isolation and negative self perception about 23% of teens report that they see what they see on social media makes them feel worse about their own lives about their own lives especially the study says college going girls are more affected and this is private going girls apparently private going young girls are more affected with what's happening on social media i ain't trying to pick a gender over here so please don't come to me after the service and say you are so biased with genders absolutely not that's what the study says and not me and many of you are laughing right now because you know that's what you were thinking right now just a seconds ago right and we live in a culture and an age where we don't know who we are we become somebody at one stage we become somebody else in another stage and this is called an imposter syndrome we open doors to be imposters to have imposters come in our life what is the meaning of this word impost i was recently introduced to this in one of the readings and i love this i encourage if you have uh, you know reading while black by isa mccauley a wonderful author she was writing about all of these situations in life and how they had to overcome it and how there is an imposter syndrome that comes into people's life if we don't know who and 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 in who our identity is you know the meaning of imposter is one that assumes false identity or title for the purpose of deception because we don't know how to win a particular day what we do is somehow let's deceive and just make it through it because the society teaches us fake it just so that you can make it right so that's the culture we are living in so we don't know the true originality of our life we don't know how to truly love somebody we don't know how to truly sit with somebody in silence starting my chaplaincy journey you know it was so difficult for me the first few weeks some people don't want to talk they just don't want to talk right and that's when i realized your presence matters more to them than your words rather than sitting there and yapping with them all i had to do is just sit with them in silence so there was this patient that i sat with for almost 45 minutes all the patient was doing is looking at my hair i don't know for what joy i have no idea for what joy yes that day i did not have a bad bad hair day so it looked really nice also so i was sitting for 45 minutes in the assurance knowing that my hair is looking good and he's just looking at my hair and staring he spoke nothing absolutely nothing at all at the end of the 45th minute he says chap 
I want to thank you for just being with me because it's been such a long time since somebody has just sat with me in silence. Because all people want to do is give me advice, 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 advice. Do this, drink water. They don't even know what water is because they've never drank water in their whole life. They want to come in, especially when you see patients who's going through something. The first thing that people say, drink water. You have stomach pain, drink water. You have headache, drink water. I know water is a solution, but when people are going through something, what people need is not a billion advices. All they need is just sit with them. Just sit with them, right? But drink your water also. Your presence values more than just speaking a lot of words. But we live in a time of deception. Why? Because the Bible introduces several times, at least five different ways of introducing the Satan. He's called your adversary. He's called a liar. He's called the Satan. And in all of those situations, we know you and I have an adversary against us who is wanting to battle with us. Not because of who you are, because of who in whom you are. Not because of what you carry. It is because of who you carry inside of you. The enemy knows if he lets a church grow and thrive, this church is going to crush his crushed head. Enemy knows if your family starts thriving without breaking the cordial relationship of your family, your family is going to be an example for many others to lead in Christ. Therefore, your enemy tries to look at every opportunity Peter writes, every opportunity, your enemy is like a roaring lion to devour whoever he finds. But what I really like is, he's only like a roaring lion. He ain't a lion. That's what I really love about our scripture. He is only like a roaring lion. But Bible calls my king of kings and the Lord of lords. It calls him the lion of Judah. He ain't an imposter. Our God is not being an imposter of being a lion. But he says, I am the lion of Judah. Who is going to lead you when you think you are not being led. Who is going to take care of you when you think nobody ain't there to take care of you. So we live in a world where we've got imposters imposters that come into our life that mess with our identity and it is very important at a very young age for you and I to understand who we are it is very important because let me tell you this also just because just because some people graduate in their age does not mean the enemy ain't going to come against them and in these days, we live in a dark age where the coming of the Lord is so near. I want the church to be very careful on what I say. Every single day, let's live with the assurance that today if Jesus comes, I'm going to be with him in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. That's the attitude that you and I got to live with. If Jesus comes today, I'm going to go with him in the heavens. We live in a time and an age where you're going to listen rumors about wars. That's what's happening. We live in a time and an age where you're going to hear news of great anointed men of God falling in their life. You're going to listen to some of the pastors that maybe you might have heard, some of the pastors that you might have followed, and it grieves my heart. Some of the great men of God that I used to follow and listen to in times of dire need, but that does not take, that does not take me into a mode of judgment because who am I to judge somebody who has gone through mistakes just because they, mis they do mistakes differently than me? We always are so quick to judge somebody else but not open a space to forgive them. But we need forgiveness from the Lord. We need forgiveness from people but we have so much problem to extend that forgiveness to people. That's called hypocrisy in my language. You will hear a lot of men of God, women of God falling because we have a fallen nature. Yes, we are in Christ, but every single day is a battle which we need to work with the Holy Spirit and go together. If not, if you change your identity, if you make your identity about possession, if you make your identity about power, you're going to fall deep into a ditch like everybody else in the world. Therefore, just because I know my identity in the yesterday does not mean I can forget my identity today. Every single day, it is needed for you and me to walk closely in the spirit of the Almighty God. You know, today we are looking at the Gospel of Luke and I love the, from all the four Gospels. Why I love all the four Gospels. I like Luke the most. One, because of his profession. Second, he is the only non-Jew writer who wrote a scripture or who wrote the Gospels. You know, he was hired, some people say, he he wrote the whole thing and analysis for his lovely dear friend named as Theophilus. 
Theophilus. And he did not write it just because he was the eyewitness. Luke was not an eyewitness. But what I really like is he was a physician. And, and, and in some of his Greek that you will learn, you will read. And many scholars have said that he's got the finest of the, of the Greek that he mentions because of the education that he has. Which means every single detail that Luke is going to write, he would have done a million times of research and review behind it before he can write it, before he can pen it down. And over here, he writes a situation in Luke chapter 4 where Jesus, who was baptized, now is being led into the, what? Into the wilderness. Don't let anybody sell you a wrong gospel. Just because you and I are in faith does not mean all problems are gone. You will still have trials. You will still have tribulations. But in midst of that, you will have the one who won it all. That's the beauty about the truth that the scripture speaks. The first thing when Jesus got out after being baptized in the water by John the Baptist, Luke chapter 4 says, he is led into the wilderness. We thought, oh God, now that I've come into faith, all my grades are going to be A and A plus. We thought just now that we have come into faith, we're going to get promotion after promotion after promotion. Hey, you know what? The biggest blessing that you and I have got is salvation. Even before the promotion that I can get The money that you and I can make The home that you and I can build The salvation is the biggest blessing that we have That is what we need to understand After Jesus' baptism People did not change Situations did not change Circumstances did not change But Jesus changed He had something called as Bible says The Holy Spirit came upon you Which means every single Sunday When you are filled with the Holy Spirit And energized by the word of God People might not change around you Your boss and his attitude will not change around you But you are changed You are changed in such a manner Where the boss is not going to influence you But you and the spirit of the almighty God Inside you Is what's going to influence the things around you So don't you wait for circumstances to change in your life for you to pick up the slacks and start moving ahead. You know that you are the change maker because the change maker lives inside of you. There are three things that quickly we are going to look at. How do we have this imposter syndrome in our life? In our life. It is so interesting to see the deception of the enemy. The first one is the deception of circumstances. The first deception of the enemy in order to bring imposter syndrome, in order to just jolt down our identity is the deception of circumstances. You know what happens? <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus was led into the wilderness after 40 days. And maybe it's the Sunday school PBS version of my Kerala PBS version of Sunday school that I read. For some reason, I thought it is only in the last three days of the 40 days where Jesus was tempted by Satan. But Bible says, actually, the whole 40 days, Satan was trying to tempt Jesus. Just not last three days where Jesus somehow found strength. Which means every single day the enemy will find a way to come and tackle with you. But if you have the word of God in your heart, the way Jesus went back to Satan, you and I can go back to Satan. The first is the deception of circumstances. You know why? You know why? Because I have underlined a particular word which says Satan comes to Jesus and says, If you are the son of? The question of if which depends on circumstances. Isn't the enemy asking us, if you are a child of God, why is the sickness coming into your life? We are asked this question a million times. If you are a child of God, why did that promotion skip you? We are asked a million times by the enemy and the world around us. If you are a child of God, why is it that your life is not being established the way the world thinks your life needs to be established? Why did you go through that accident? Why did you have to be in the hospital? Why did you have to spend so much money? Why is it that you're not able to be blessed the way people in the world are monetarily blessed? We go through the issues of circumstances where the enemy uses our circumstance to doubt the character character of God don't let your circumstance doubt the character of God you know what's so beautiful you know when the enemy comes Satan asks Jesus the first question if you if you if you the circumstance if you are the son of God right but the beauty is it says in Luke chapter 3 verses you know can you put the next slide on Luke chapter 3 Luke chapter 3 verse 22 the spirit of the Lord said and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son. Already in chapter 3, God told Jesus, you are my beloved son. In chapter 4, after listening to that, the enemy comes and asks, hey, if you are a child of God, 
Even before you and I can perform anything, God has already declared that you and I are his children. You know why? Because the deception of circumstances is all about, is all about, I am what I do. We live in a world where the first thing that we are all asked is, you are what you do. Your performance, the sum of your performance is what makes your identity. That's what the world says. Even before you could perform anything, God declared you are his son. You are his daughter. Right in chapter 3, the spirit of the Lord tells Jesus, hey, you are my beloved son. After that, the enemy comes and says, hey, if you are the son of God, isn't that the same strategy that happened in Genesis chapter 2 where the enemy like a slithering snake walks into the garden of Eden and questions. It is not about what you believe. It's about what you hear that makes you believe who you are. That's why faith comes from hearing. It depends what you hear. If you, word, though, if you hear the word of God, your faith is encouraged in Christ and in every situation, what will come out of your mouth is words of faith and not discouragement. The first thing in the deception of circumstance where the world comes to tell you, you are what you perform. You are what you can do. You are what you can achieve. No, listen to this. Because when you do what you think the society asks you to do, it depends on your competencies. It depends on your achievement. It depends on your awards. Last week I was telling you, it is the man who can give you the award. It is only God who can give you the reward. Reward does not happen on earth. So stop looking for people as appreciation and awards start working for the Lord New Testament the scripture instructs each one of us hey when you do something do it that you're doing it for the Lord and not for somebody else therefore you wouldn't be bothered if somebody comes and tells you thank you but it's a good culture to say thank you if somebody has been beneficial in your life it's always good to acknowledge people but even if you don't have that acknowledgement I want to assure you you are not the sum of your performance you are the sum of who God calls you who you are and the last I checked my Bible and the verses have not changed yet it still says that you and I we are not slaves of the enemy we are not slaves of sin we are not slaves of sickness we are not slaves of curse we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God and if you are the children Bible says you are the heir to his kingdom where you have the authority and the right to ask the Abba father what it is that you're struggling with is it anger is it addiction is it going through seasons of abandonment I want you to know you serve a father not a God not a God that's the beauty about it I, I, I remember telling the church the only time Jesus when he prayed God my God is when he touched sin on the Calvary taking the sins of the world. That is the only time Jesus said, God, my God. If not, whenever Jesus prayed, he prayed, my father. So when you and I make mistakes, go to God saying, my God. But when you know that he has blessed you, justified you, made you righteous, go to him not as my God, not as a distant God. No, more than a God, you are a father to me. God is spirit, so don't just restrict him to a gender. Don't just restrict him to a gender. Many people like associating God as a mother. There is no problem in associating God as a mother. Whatever you feel comfortable with. But again, there are only two genders that the Bible speaks about in which we stand on, which is a man and a woman. Let's move on to the next one that we have. I don't want to hover upon it. The second deception of the enemy, the first one is deception of? Of? Circumstances. The second is deception of comparison. In midst of the deception of comparison, we are always asked in our life, look at this, the instance of Jesus' life. Then the devil taking him up, 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 up on high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment. And then, the devil, and then the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory for this has been delivered to me and I will give it to you whomever I wish. The second way of imposter syndrome that walks into our life is when we start comparing ourselves with other people. You know what the, the, the lie of comparison is? It is, I am what I have. The lie of, what is the first one? The first C. The lie of, somebody help me. Somebody help me. The lie of the first C. Only when it is on screen we can remember, right? Yeah. The lie of? circumstance says I am what I do the lie of comparison says 
I am what I have. And this is where we start looking for power, for respect, for authority, for things where we can be put on a pedestal. That's the lie that the enemy tries to tackle our lives into and mess with our identity. In midst of the deception of comparison, what you and I need to look at is assurance of God's plan in our life. You like it or not, God has a plan for you. You might not see it today, but he's got a plan for you. We all go through this question of God, when? But I know whenever it is, you are about to do it. Not in my times, not in my terms. I know you're about to do it. You protected me when I was on the highway yesterday. I know you're going to take care of me when I walk on the streets as well. I know that I serve a God, but even if I don't know the timing, I can trust you that you have good thoughts for me. Trust in God's plan. You know why Jesus said, Jesus said, if you will worship, the enemy said, if you will worship me, I will give you everything. Jesus looks at the enemy and says in verse number eight, worship only the God in heaven alone and nobody else. You know why? What you bow down in front of decides the authority, the thing that needs to happen on your life. What you decide to worship is what will take you into the warships of your life. What you decide to worship is the one that will decide what needs to happen in your life. If you worship anger, if you worship agony, if you worship sorrows, if you worship you know, security in the world, if you worship the authority of the world, when I say authority is gaining authority in the world, if you worship the pedestal positions in the world, that is what is going to govern you. Look at what Jesus says, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. Are we going to worship the things that the world tells us to worship or are we going to worship the one who called me and you, his child, his son or his daughter? That is the decision that we ought to make because the, the deception of comparison is all about I am what I have. If that is the case, what I have is the creator of heaven and earth residing inside of me. What I have is the power of resurrection that raised Jesus among the dead. What I have is a God who loves me, who calls me his child. And not just that, every single day at a very young age, I started saying something to myself. I used to tell it before I go to college and school. I am a creation of a creator who has created me creatively. You got to start speaking and pronouncing these things out. You got to say every single day in the morning, looking at the face of the enemy if he is listening to you because I know the enemy is somewhere there slithering over there listening to you. You got to say I am a creation of a creator who has created me creatively. You are created uniquely. You are created differently. Don't let nobody your circumstance or people undermine you. Look at the plan God has. The third thing and I have the worship team behind me. The third thing is the deception of competition. We are always told now these days we are living in a time and an age, you know, it was so funny, I called my cousin brother who is in the UK now and, and he's got, uh, he's got a, a baby who is uh, four years of age, four years of age. And he said, you know, Joe's, uh, Joseph is so busy. I said, he's only four years. Yeah, he is busy because we are planning his swimming classes. I said, okay, when I grew up, all my parents wanted us to just come back home. These days we are putting children in, I mean, it's, it's all, it's all good. There's so much competition happening. As soon as, as soon as, as soon as you are born, it is a whole program list that has been made, what you got to do till you get married and get out of the house, right? It's so much of competition. But as I reminded you a few weeks ago, Christian life is not competing. It is all about complimenting. Christian life is not competing with each other. It's all about how is it that I can come along with you and compliment you? How is it that I can stand with you in the faith that God has given? Does that mean saying yes to every nonsense that happens in the world? No, we got to stand our ground based on the scripture. But in midst of that, you and I are not called to compete with each other because that's what the enemy says. The enemy looks at Jesus and says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from there. Compete with the word of God. Compete with, because the word of God said, he's going to send the angels down to protect you. That's what the enemy is going to come and tell us. Compete with every single person out there in a negative. Competition is good, trust me. I love having a healthy competition. We went for a competition yesterday and our church represented and we were playing for the CCF volleyball tournament. Our team did a fabulous job. Can we give a round of applause for them? They did really well. They did really well. Yeah, 
they went all the way till the top 5 and and you know you win some you lose some you're not going for award but we love whenever we get a trophy we love walking around with it but when we don't get a trophy also we still praise the lord why because we are not going to put some church down or institution down we just going to have a healthy competition and they did a fabulous job you know they i almost saw somebody bleeding also so so i can say they put their sweat and blood into the ccf tournament you know they did a fabulous job and when we in our life walk into the situations of our life are we going to compete with everybody or are we going to compliment everybody because if you want to compliment your people your neighborhood the people that god has brought into your life you need to have assurance in god's purpose god's purpose first thing is you got to have assurance in god's plan second is you got to have assurance in god's purpose in your life because he has a purpose for you you see it or not he has got a purpose Pastor I don't know how to study how don't know how to read I was so encouraged I think I shared the story with you there was a young man who was going through his life who could not who could not put words together who could not put words together right so he gave up in his life he thought education is not for him but his mother asked him pray one year and you work hard work hard you will see a difference today that young man is doing his phd in chicago that's the god that you and I serve the story is not about me don't worry <laughs> If you're all looking at me and thinking the story is about me, this is not about me, right? That's the God we serve, and He is able to talk to many other young people who've got those issues and encourage them to hold on to their faith because we serve a God who is a healer, who has got a purpose. So the problems that you and I go through, when we go through fire, we come out as gold, refined as gold, just so that we can shine in somebody else's life. not to get the glory for ourselves but to give the glory into the lord that's the purpose that the lord has for us jesus looked at satan and said it has been said you shall not tempt the lord your god because he is faithful to his word because god is faithful to his word can the church be all stand up in god's presence <laughs> the first lie of the enemy is i am what i do The second lie of the enemy is I am what I have what I possess. The third lie of the enemy is I am what people think of me. We start competing in this world because we always want to see what others think of me. We want to compete and be better. Off late, I've realized and it has happened in my life. I've made these mistakes also to be honest if I'm giving fair with you. We walk into gaining knowledge just so that we can debate with others. not to understand and gain wisdom out of that knowledge we just want to compete with others and prove how good we are just so that others can say oh this guy he is the smartest person alive i want to tell you something about competing in life you got to know somebody out there is always better than you and me somebody out there is always you and i we might be good in one aspect and we can beat others in that aspect but there's somebody else who is good in every other aspect of their life There is no point in competing with our neighbors with the people that we love that that God has brought into our life that's that's why Jesus says hey you want to do something you want to please me just love God and love your neighbor that is the will of God for our life if you and I want to get out of the deception of competition we need to have the assurance in God's purpose knowing that hey God I know you got a purpose for my family It's on the last thread right now but I know if I hold it it's going to break but you're going to hold it my education and my finances that needs to come in god it's it's on the last brim right now but I know you got it got my health that I need right now for my family it's in the last the doctor said they can, there is nothing they can do thank you that you are there who can do everything about it change our perception of how we look at things in our life in midst of that if you can have your identity let me conclude by saying this identity is all about in all about in whom you are you want to know who you are you need to know in whom you are which is you and i bible says where paul writes it you and i we are in christ and i love that word in christ For example a whole bottle of water if that represents the lord in heaven you and i are just the droplet inside that bottle of water where you and i are not surrounded by the enemies of the world you and i are submerged in the promise of the almighty god 
you and I are in Christ. As we always do every Sunday, I want to encourage the church right now to walk into a moment of prayer where we ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what it is that you want me to understand today? Have I been chasing what the world has been asking me to do? To look at the affirmations of the world and just to come up at par with the positions of people and the title that people hold? Was I been thinking that I am what I do? I want to get out of it, O oh Lord. Have I been thinking I am what I have? I want to get out of that, Lord. Have I been thinking that I am what people think about me? I want to get out of that, Lord. And I want to ask you that I will find my peace, my assurance and my security in you and not in the money that we make. Because we know that money will follow, positions will follow, authority and power will follow when we follow you, O oh God. Help us to make you the priority of our life. Help us to, O oh God, love and encourage and be with the people that you bring in our life. Help us to bring a smile on somebody's face because you have smiled over our life, O oh God. Help us to forgive others the way you forgive us. Help us to stand with others the way you stand with us. Help us to be a good Samaritan the way you have been a good Samaritan for us. Help us to extend the hand of Father of encouragement the way you encourage us day in and day out of Father. In midst of all of that, when the enemy tries to shackle us, oh Father, in midst of all of that, when the enemy tries to, Father God, try to, try, try to define us based on what the society thinks, we pray in the name of Jesus, we will find our identity in you and you alone. And in the coming weeks, oh Father, help us to encourage others to find their identity in you and not in what the world says. Thank you for listening to our prayer and being magnified. We give you all glory and honor. And as we extend into a time of worship and giving unto you, you. We pray unto you, O God, our praises and our worship and our giving will be honorable unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Help us to live under the standard of heaven and not of man, O God. Help us to be pleasing unto you and not to men, O God. Help us to walk in favor and your mercy. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' loving and gracious name we pray. Come on, church, shout an amen. God bless each one of us.